Hello everyone, welcome back to Bolt Box Commander. My name is Kellex, and today we're doing another deck tech. This time we're featuring the partner pair of Tevishat and Roga instead of Roga. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel as it helps out a great deal. So what does this deck actually do? Well, there's different ways you can actually go with this type of build, but I decided to go with a very uh, special style of deck. This is going to be a, a theft deck. So let's talk about these two cards right quick. So Tevishat is a four loyalty planeswalker. First ability is you can create two zero one one black throw creature tokens. Plus one says you may sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. If you do, draw two cards. Then draw another card if the sacrifice permanent was a commander. And it's minus 10 ability says gain control of all commanders. Put all commanders from the command zone onto the battlefield under your control. Then Rogra says is a zero one cobalt first strike menace trample. So I went with the theft uh, design for this deck, and it's one that's not really seen a lot of play. A lot of people will see, uh, build it in a different way, but I went with the theft uh, design on this deck. So let's go ahead and talk about the creatures that I've put in the deck. All right, so the first one is going to be Dragon's Race Channeler. Now, I basically just use this one for its Delirium ability. Then we have Viscera Seer, the one drop, Sacrifice a Creature, Scribe one. So, this is a little bit of a, a, a engine up that's going to be built into the deck because I'll be creating a lot of thrall tokens so I can sack them to scry. That way I can kind of stack my deck up the way I need it to be. Then we have Skirt Prospector, so one drop, one one. I can sacrifice Goblin to add red to my mana pool. So it's just basically a little ramp source. Then we have Ragavan Nimble Pilfer, one drop, two one. Whenever Ragavan Nibble Pilfer deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token, and then exile the top card of that player's library until the end of turn, you may cast this card. So uh, this is great to have in an opening hand, a quick one drop to get the uh, free treasure token and exile the opponent's uh, top card. So I, I've used this one quite a bit, and I've had a lot of success with him. I've actually been able to get at least three treasure tokens out of him before he gets eliminated. Uh, Cult Conscript, so one drop, two, one. Cult Conscript is battlefield tapped, and I can pay one colorless and one black, returning from the graveyard to the battlefield. Activate if a non-skeleton died under your control. So uh, this is a little bit of a recursion theme uh, creature right here with with sacrificing uh, the thrall tokens. I keep bringing them back over and over. Now, Loyal Apprentice is probably one of my favorite cards in this deck. It's a 2-1, one, one colors, one red. It has haste. It has the ability of lieutenant. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control your commander... Create a 1-1 one, one colorless doctor artifact creature token with flying, and the token gains haste. So this actually gives me sack outlets and chart blockers. And as long as I have either Tevish Sight or Rawgra on the field, I'm always going to get that ability. So it gives me, it helps me create a small army. Now we have Ornithopter of Paradise is a 2 drop, zero two 2 flying and you can tap to add one mana of any color, so this helps with mana fixing. Zulaport Cutthroat. It's a 1-1. One, one. Whenever Zulaport Cutthroat or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So this card's been an all-star and commander for a long time, and it really shines in this deck with, with the ability to uh, gain a bunch of life by sacking tokens. 
Then we have Vron Executioner Thane, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever one or more other creatures you control die, each opponent loses life and you gain two life. So this is just another Zulaport, but with a bigger body and, and, and double the life gain. Then we also have Blood Artist. It's a 0-1. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, target player loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, once again, that same effect like Zulaport Cutthroat. Then we have Priest of Forgotten Gods. It's a 1-2. I can tap it and sacrifice two other creatures. Any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature. You add two black mana and draw a card. So this is a really, really good card to have in this type of deck because we're, we're always going to be sacrificing creatures and, and the ability to uh, add mana to our pool and draw a card is really nice. Then we have Dire Fleet Hoarder. It's a 2-1 pirate. When Dire Fleet Hoarder dies, create a colorless treasure to artifact token with tap and sack this artifact. Add one mana to your mana pool. So uh, this is a, a good source for ramp and a good source for life gain and death triggers as well. Next, we have Carrier Thrall, 2-1 Vampire. When Carrier Thrall dies, put a plus one, excuse me, put a 1-1 one, one colors, a draws a creature token onto the battlefield. It has sacked this creature, add one colorless to your mana pool. So it's another, it creates more sack outlets and, and also helps with a little bit of ramp as well. Reassembling Skeleton is another all-star in this deck. It's a 1-1, one, one, one colors, one black. Return Reassembling Skeleton from the graveyard to your battlefield. So this is a perfect uh, creature for sack fodder for you know, all, all types of triggers. Then we have Squee the Immortal, 2-1 Goblin. You may cast Squee the Immortal from your graveyard or from exile. So, another all-star sack outlet for this deck. Then we have Mayhem Devil. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. Whenever a creature, or excuse me, whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals 1 damage to any target. So, this is a, a, a card that's been in the format for a long time. It's grown in popularity. And he also does a, you know, a great deal of work in this deck as well. Next, we have Murderous Rider, 2-3 Zombie Knight. It has the ability of Swift in, which says, destroy target creature or planeswalker, you lose two life. And the other side of it has its lifelinker. Whenever Murderous Rider's put in, when it dies, put it at the bottom of the owner's library. So we've got a lot of versatility here with creature removal and, and gaining life plus re recursion. Then we have the Simeon Spirit Guide, 2-2. Two, two. Exile the Simeon Spirit Guide from your hand to add one red mana to your mana pool. Uh, he's basically used just for a ramp source. Next we have Woe Strider, 3-2. When Woe Strider enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat creature token, sacrifice another creature, and scry one. He has the escape ability, three colors, two black, exile four other cards from your graveyard, and when he escapes with two plus one plus one counters on it. So uh, uh, he generates, you know, sack outlets for us as well. Plus we can bring him back from the graveyard, so the recursion is really nice. Then we have Yahini Undying Partisan, 2-2 two, two, Aetherborn Vampire with Haste. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on Yahini, and then you can sacrifice another creature to give him indestructible to the end of turn. And then we have Doom Necromancer, 2-2, two, two, pay one black Tap, sacrifice Doom Necromancer, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, you know, this is a good card for re 
reoccurring as well. And uh, I've used it quite a bit to bring back some of the other big beaters and other sack outlets to the graveyard so I can just keep that same engine going. Now we have Priest of Gix, 2-1, Human Cleric Minion. When Priest of Gix enters the battlefield, add three black mana to your mana pool. So this is basically a chart blocker and a dark ritual with a body. So I like the flexibility that this card really offers. Next is Braid's Arisen Nightmare, 3-3 three, three Nightmare. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. Once again, uh, we're, we're sacrificing creatures and this just helps us uh, uh, ping our opponents to death. Then we have Legomos, Hand of Hatred, 1-3, Human Shaman. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 2-1 elemental creature token with Trample and Haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next instant. It also has tap search your library for a card, put it in your hand, and shuffle. Activate only if five or more creatures died this turn. So this basically just creates uh, you know a sack uh sack outlet creature for us to uh trigger off other effects. Then we have Cardor Doom Scourge. Four three when Cardor Doom Scourge enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each other if, each combat if able and attack a player other than you if able. When an attacking creature dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So this guy has just been a beast in this deck. So basically, I like to sit there and sack him and bring him back to get the triggers to make my opponents attack each other while I sit back and, and gain all the life from creatures dying. Next, we have the Demir House Guard, two three skeleton with fear. Sack a creature, regenerate House Demir. Now, I don't really use him very much for that, but the transmutability is really useful in this deck. It allows me to go and fetch for a you know a card that I really need in a certain situation. So he's just great utility. Then we have Solemn Simulacrum, two two Golem. When Solemn Simulacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card on the battlefield tap, and shuffle, and when he dies, you draw a card. So he's great sack fodder as well. Next, we have the Abhorrent Overlord. This is a 6-6 demon with flying. When Abhorrent Overlord enters the battlefield, put a number of 1-1 Black Harpy creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to black. And at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a, to a creature. So, this is another sack generator that I like to use. And plus, it, it's a big body with flying. So, you know, this one can actually help protect your board and protect yourself while you get your board set up for, to, for your finishing uh, play, whatever you have in mind. Then the last creature we have is the Hoarding Brewlord, 7-6 Dragon. He has Convoke and Flying. When Hoarding Brewlord enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may play it. Spells you cast from exile have Convoke. So this right here can be a finisher or you help you go... Uh, look for your fisher in your deck and is it you know another big flying body you know that really does a lot of work in itself now let's go over the instance that we have in the deck so the well, first one would be is lightning bolt lightning bolt deals three damage to target creature or player uh, this has been a staple in many formats over the years, and it's just an overall wonderful card. 
Then we have Tragic Slip for one black mana. Target creature gets neg one, neg one until end of turn. And what I like about it is the morbid ability. That creature gets a minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn. Instead, if a creature died this turn. So I like using this one to blow up somebody's big threat. This blows up Prater Hoof Behemoth and, um, you know, anything that's really big on the board. You know, I've, I've used this so many times to just take care of, of big threats. Next, we have Smelt. One red mana instant destroy target artifact. Uh, just really cheap, effective artifact removal. Do we have Dark Ritual? Uh, staple and Commander since its beginning. One black mana, and you can add three black mana to your mana pool. This is just a, a great ramp. Do we have Pyro Blast, which counters target spell if it's blue, or destroys target permanent if it's blue. So I've used Pyro Blast to blow up many a Rhystic Study in my day, and it's been, you know, really helpful in that aspect. And I, it's a card that, Anytime I play a red deck, I always try to find a place for it. And we have another one that does the same thing, Active Volcano. Now, I've been considering dropping one or the other because I found that a lot of times, either one of them usually winds up being a dead card in my hand. Next, we have Burnt Offering. For one black mana, sacrifice the creature to add that creature's casting cost in any combination of red or black to your mana pool. So this is a good uh, source for uh, ramping and color fixing. Then we have Thrill of Possibility, one colors, one red instant, as an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card, draw two cards. Uh, this is also another commander staple as well for card draw. Then we have a braid, one colorless, one red, instant, choose one. A braid deals three damage to a target creature or destroy a target artifact. I just love the flexibility that this card offers. and I, It's like another red card that I always try to fit into any deck that runs red. Next we have Soul Shattered, two colorless, one black, instant, each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control. So this is a good way to re remove uh, big threats on the field as well. Next we have the Chaos Warp. Two colors, one red instant. The owner of target permit shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library. If it's the permanent card, they put it on the battlefield. Now, this can be a hit or miss type of card because you may uh, actually, if you target a, an opponent with this, they may actually flip over something that was probably better than what they uh, had gotten, that you got rid of. So you have to be kind of careful with using this. Now, I've also used this against my own uh, cards and actually have it pay off pretty good. All right, now we'll go to the sorceries. So the first one we're going to talk about is Rite of Flame, one red mana, add two red mana, then add one red mana for each card named Rite of Flame in your graveyard. Uh, this is just a really good ramp source. Next card we use is a thud, one red mana, sorcery. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sack a creature. Thrun deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. So this is um, used a lot to uh, for spot removal and to trigger off any Zulaport effects that I may have on the field. And we have Faithless Looting. Another Commander All-Star, one red mana, draw two cards, and discard two cards. And it has a flashback of two colors from one red. So it's just, an, uh, it's just a good card draw source. Raise Dead, one black mana, bring one creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this could bring back uh, your uh, Big Beater, or it could bring back one of your uh, key uh, combo pieces. Then we have Blasphemous Act, 
uh, eight colorless, one red. This spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, and it deals 13 damage to each creature. So this is the red board wipe. And I'm not a real big fan of running a lot of board wipes in a deck. The most I might run is maybe two, but this deck, I think this is the only one that I run. Next, we have Diabolic Intent, one colorless, one black. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sack a creature, search your library for a card, put that card in your hand and shuffle. Uh, it's, not as, it's not as good as, as maybe Demonic Tutor is, but it still fits well with the theme of this deck because we're always sacking creatures, and this can allow us to go fetch our, uh, our winning uh, combo or, or a combo piece. So it's very useful. Uh, next, we have another card drawing source, Tormenting Voice. As an additional cost of casting Tormenting Voice, discard a card, draw two cards. Uh, Sign and Blood is another draw outlet. Two black mana. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. And I like to use this card targeting myself because I'm going to be gaining quite a bit of life anyway, so two losing two life is nothing. Now, here's where we get into the uh, theft part of the deck. So we're going to start off with the card Wrangle. One colorless, one red. Gain control of target creature with power four or less until the end of turn. And tap that creature to gain haste until the end of turn. Now, cards like this, and there's several more in this uh, set that I use to basically take control of the field. And usually I like to target, you know, Somebody's commander or um, somebody's, you know, big threat. Or if I if they have, like, maybe let's say they have a, a flying creature on the field and I don't have nothing to block it with, I can just take control of it and sack it to Tevish Sack. And there are several cards in this deck that do that same thing. Uh, like Mark of Mutiny, uh, two close, one red, gain control of target creature until the end of the turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it and tap it and gain haste. And usually when I uh, do these type of effects, I'll usually attack with the creature first before sacking it to Tevish Sack so I get the extra value from the theft. Uh, another one, uh, this is one that's been around for a long time, Act of Treason, gain control of target creature until you turn, untap it, gain haste. Once again, we're always uh, stealing creatures to sack the Tevish side. Uh, Furnace Reigns basically does the same thing. Now, this also has the ability of whenever the creature deals combat damage to a player or a battle, you create a treasure token. So, gives you a little bit of a ramp effect as well. Harness by Force, uh, pretty much the same thing. Gain control of target, any of target creatures to in a turn untap those creatures. So, this one comes with a little steeper price with Strive. So, if you want to target more creatures, you know... You can pay an extra two colors and one red for each creature to grab to do. Uh, next one up, Price of Loyalty. It does basically pretty much the same thing as the other cards from this. So, like I said, there's a lot of theft cards in this deck. Now, we, on we only run a... a very few, very few uh, enchantments, but they're crucial for the function of this deck. So, one of the ones I love the most is Kaya's Ghost Form. It's one black mana. It's this enchant creature or planeswalker you control. When enchanted permit dies or is put into exile, return that card to the battlefield under your control. So, most of the time, I'm going to target Tavish Sight with this to keep him on to keep them around because it because that's usually the first target everybody goes for uh, the next one that i like a lot is red horde invasion it's a one colors one black enchantment at, be, at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life and a mass one and whenever a zombie token control with power six or greater attacks it gains life flicking to end of turn 
So this is just a free sack outlet generator for this deck, and it's really a must-have. Now this next card is Shining Impetus. Now this is another little strategy that I threw into the deck. It's uh, two colors, one red. It says Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature gets plus two, plus two, and is goaded. It attacks each combat if able. And whenever Enchanted Creature attacks, you create a treasure token. So I like to put this on an opponent's big creature because it gives me a free beater to do with, well, you know, I can do whatever I want to, sit back and, get and gain all the benefit from it. And plus this thing creates a treasure token for you as well. Then we have Bastion of Remembrance, two colors, one red enchantment. When Bastion of Remembrance enters a battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. And whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one, you gain one. So this is a uh, enchantment, Zillaport effect. And, you know, with all the creatures that's going to be dying as far as our 1-1s our, our one, and 0-1s, you know, it's just just a great source for life gain and pain damage. You know, you run Parasitic Impetus. It's like Shining Impetus. It goads an opponent's creature. And this one has the ability of whenever an enchanted creature attacks, its controller loses two life and you gain two life. So that, that's free life gain right there for yourself. Now, we run a, uh, a handful of artifacts for this deck. So the first one we're going to look at is Wayfarer's Bauble, one colorless, two colors and tap sack, Wayfarer's Bauble. Search your library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. Arcane Signet, two colorless artifact, add one color of any color to your mana pool. Skull Clamp, now this one is a, a key piece in this deck as well. So it's one colorless. Equipped creature gets plus one neg one. And whenever equipped creature is put to the graveyard, you draw two cards. Equip one. So I use this a lot on some of my smaller creatures for sack outlet to get card draw. And this card's uh, another key piece, like I said, to this deck. Then we have Mindstone, two colorless, tap it to add one colorless, or you can pay one colorless and sack it to draw a card. So it's a little bit of a card draw uh, ramp outlet. Then we have Spring Leaf Drum, for one colorless, tap it, tap an untapped creature you control, add one mana of any color. So this can help out with color fixing. Then we have Classic Soul Ring. Now, we only run 11 mountains and 14 swamps in this deck as far as basics. Oh, there we go. Now, the now the unbasics that I run in this deck are Bajuka Bog, which says Bajuka Bog enters the battlefield tap. And whenever it enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. So this is great for graveyard hate. Then we have Mortuary Mire. It enters the battlefield tap. And when it enters the battlefield, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. So this can help you get back a key a creature from your graveyard back to your hand. Field of Ruin. Uh, and I mainly run Field of Ruin to combat uh, cards like uh, Rogue's Passage and things of that nature. Then another land I use is Care Keep, Legendary Land, tap it to add one colorless, or you could pay one colorless, one red, tap it, create a zero one one red Cobalt creature named Cobalt of Kurt D., so this is just another uh, sack outlet generator for me. Next one is uh, Exotic Orchard. You can tap it to add one mana, add one mana pool, excuse me, 
the, the, so the writing's messed up on this card. It's a damaged card. Add to your mana pool one mana of any color that a land or opponent could produce. Then we have Command Tower. Add one man of any color in your commander's color identity. Then we run Sulphur Springs. So, this deck, like I said, has has been one of my best decks that I've had. You know, I've, I've been very fortunate to go undefeated with this deck. And what I'll do is provide a link to the deck list down in the comment section below. So, that'll wrap it up for this deck, deck for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for joining me and have a good day.